What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Real dead meat. You're dead meat! Go ahead and laugh, you guys. If I ever find a little glasses of business, it's dead meat. Welcome to Dead Meat, the channel that makes horror movies less scary because of background music and corny jokes. I'm that corny jokester, James A. Janice, and today I'll be ranking all eight movies in the Leprechaun franchise. From worst to best, in my personal opinion, of course. I covered the Leprechaun franchise three years ago, before the kill count was even a full one year old. Back then, I had some unkind words for the series, with particular disparagement for one little shit. The Leprechaun himself fucking sucks. He's mean and nasty and hardly ever actually funny. I've changed a lot these past three years, and not just the speed at which I talk. Seriously, past James, was someone chasing your words with a machete? Back then, I had a more binary view of judging films as good or bad. Nowadays, I appreciate movies in a multitude of ways, including the often attempted but rarely successful type where one is so bad it's good. I hate it when movies try too hard to purposefully be so bad they're good. Looking at you, Sharknado. But most Leprechaun movies are effortlessly bad. They're exquisitely bad. They are, in fact, so bad they're good. And even the leprechaun himself knows it. I'm so bad, I'm good. God help me, I love that little shit. That's why, in order to ensure an accurate personal ranking, I actually rewatched all eight movies to write and make this video. My opinions on them from three years ago were simply too out of date. It was definitely the right choice. My rankings changed drastically from what they would have been back then. Always gotta be willing to update your beliefs and preferences, you know? I'll be honest though, between my conflicting past feelings towards each movie and the extreme variance in their strange and weaknesses, this may have been the most difficult franchise ranking I've ever had to do. But I did it, cause I'm a professional. Without further ado, here are my personal rankings of the Leprechaun movies from worst to best. Number 8 my least favorite Leprechaun movie is the 2014 reboot Leprechaun Origins. I'm not striking any new ground here, this is probably everyone's least favorite lep. Mostly because, um, uh, look at that thing, it's not a fucking Leprechaun. As with most movies though, you can still find some good things to point out and appreciate. The main cast playing the college kids does well considering the material, while Gary Chalk and Teach Grant give some surprisingly passionate performances as a conflicted father and son. The plot of them sacrificing sacrificing tourists to keep their village safe from the leprechaun is interesting and I'm into it. But after some initial act one promise, the movie falls apart and becomes an underexposed beat by beat snooze fest. I guess we shouldn't be surprised about a storyline with a promising start that ends up boring and predictable. This was made by WWE Studios after all. And the lazy story isn't even the worst part. Nothing, not the performances, nor the halfway decent production value. Ooh, drone shot can counteract the film's most egregious offense, this shitty so-called leprechaun. For all his faults, OG Leppy Boy is an S-tier monster makeup design. Gabe Bartalos created a hideous creature that perfectly suited Warwick Davis's gleeful malice. He felt real. He had character. He was great. In contrast, here's this stupid fucking thing. It's in the shadows or out of focus almost all of the time it's on screen, and when we do see it, it just crawls around and quickly cut close-ups growling like a pissed off zoo animal. It makes no sense to advertise Dylan Postel in the role because it might as well have been a puppet being controlled just off screen. And can you get any lazier than first person attacks with a predator filter thrown over the footage? This would be awful in any monster movie, but the fact that they called this a leprechaun is a downright insult to the franchise's greatest asset, its iconic villain. No matter how good some of the kills are, or how many tears Teach Grant sheds, this movie is an abject failure. The original Lep movies tried to be fantasy slasher comedies, and they succeed at each of those things to varying degrees. Next time, I'll take the elevator. This movie tries to be a serious creature feature, and fails because its creature is barely even featured. It sucks, and it is easily my last place leprechaun movie. Number 7. 
just above the bottom of the barrel is Leprechaun 2 from 1994. This movie is a huge step up from Origins, meaning I don't outright hate it, at least not anymore. I'm still not a big fan, but I can appreciate it as a successful transition for the series. While the original Leprechaun was far from serious, the sequel pointedly heightened the comedy and cartoonishness, which I think was the right move for the franchise. It also plays into the fantasy element more and gives our Leppy Boy some backstory, even though it wouldn't stay consistent throughout the series. Which reminds me, there's a theory that most of the Leprechauns are different individuals from film to film. I actually really like that theory, it makes a lot of sense. Still, I have some lingering annoyances with this movie, mostly in the form of its characters. Sandy Barron does a fantastic job playing Drunkle Morty, with a lot of comedic flourishes and lines I originally overlooked. I should have returned this book to the library five years ago. But the character is still kind of obnoxious to watch, a complaint that goes double for the unappreciative snob Bridget. Some people can't afford to let their small businesses fail, Bridget. They can't just run around riding go-karts all day. Cody's not that much more interesting than his love interest, and in fact, this issue of having a boring main couple is one that plagues the entire first half of the franchise. There are enjoyable performances by talented character actors in bit parts, though I'm still not sure why the hell Tony Cox was acting so weird. But the problem is that they're not in most of the movie. Bridget and Cody are. <laughs> I know, joke's on me. Number 6. At number 6, I have the 1993 original, Leprechaun, aka the one with Jennifer Aniston. I know it should get props for being the first one, but in all honesty, this is a pretty boring movie. I mean, no offense to all the North Dakotans in the house, but I just don't think the Peace Garden State is the best setting for a movie about a magical murder fairy. It feels restrictive to the character's potential and limiting in its locale. I don't want to stare at a farmhouse for 90 minutes. The movie has a slightly dark tone than its sequels, and although I'm glad the series quickly became more comedic, I like that we get one that tries to be scary and funny. Warren Davis can balance those tones perfectly in his performance, and this first film is a good showcase of how sinister and sneering he can be, tricking people with his magic and laughing while he murders. Sure, he's also sometimes a punching bag in green striped socks, but without his moments of pure evil here, the character wouldn't be half as successful. As far as the other characters go. I love Alex and Ozzy, they're a sweet pair of friends, but this first movie begins the trend of having unlikable leads. Tori and Nate aren't as bland as some of the main characters that would follow, but I can't stand their endless back and forth basic ass gender warfare. Did I misplace my 1950s calendar here? Girls? Listen bud, hey this is the 90s. Women are treated equal. Also, her dad just fucking disappears from the movie. He goes to the hospital halfway through and never comes back. That's shitty writing. The original Leprechaun introduced an amazing monster and did a good job establishing a base tone to build off of. Other than that, it was a lackluster execution, and we're lucky the sequel's course corrected or else we wouldn't have all this little shit to wade through. Number 5. Just on the wrong side of halfway through the list is the sixth film from 2003, Leprechaun Back to the Hood. I'm a big fan of the first in the hood, but its sequel is the Leprechaun movie I feel most meh about. I don't dislike it at all, but it's also not very memorable. It tries to have serious characters and moral dilemmas, just like the first in the hood, but between the cheesy acting and the sappy score, it sometimes comes off as more of an after-school special. What's it gonna get better for, Sam? Why our lives gotta be like this? This might be the only Leprechaun movie that has moments that are unintentionally laughably bad. You've been making a lot of moves on the street in the past couple of days, Rory. Plus, those scene transitions. Like a page peel? For real? Did you just get Windows Movie Maker or something? I like the animated intro with the kind of Lord of the Rings style voice narration, and I really dig Lep's new look that's more gothic and darker in color. But he's also absent for a lot of the first act. This might be the Leprechaun movie with the least amount of Leppy Boy. You know, not counting the bullshit that is Leprechaun Origins. Lep does have some memorable scenes when he finally shows up, but he too often feels like a last minute addition to this movie's sappy story. And what is with those gold soul bubbles or whatever? Make more sense, movie! It's a mediocre end to Warwick Davis's run as the character, but at least it's far from being the franchise's low point. Number 4. 
At number four, I have Leprechaun 4. In space. This might be unexpected for those of you who remember the kill counts. I hated this movie, despised it. Three years ago, it would have been last on my list. Hell, I still hated it when I covered Lep Returns two years ago in 2019. Except Leprechaun 4 in space, which can still fuck off forever. But now when I watch Leprechaun in space, I wonder why my hatred burns so bright. Yes, it's a bad movie. Yes, it's an aliens ripoff. And yes, they never once say the word Leprechaun, which is pretty fucking weird for a movie called Leprechaun. But Leprechaun in space is a sort of masterpiece of trash, not nearly as boring as I made it out to be in the kill count. So often, you'll get a bizarrely bad movie that's only interesting for a little bit before it coasts to a lackluster ending. Not Lep 4! It's least wild shit happens in the beginning, when Darth Leppy Boy breaks out a Lep Saber. The what the fuck moments keep coming and coming, and by time you get to the German Dalek, who becomes a Scorpion Spider-Man, you'll have forgotten all about the comparatively normal things like a flattened pancake head and a space princess who flashes her boobs as a threat. By this film, the franchise knew it was ridiculous, and leaned into its B-movie status with pride. There's plenty to criticize, and I think I latched onto them my first time through. The main characters are probably the most bland of the franchise. The ultimate iteration of the series' penchant for generically attractive leads. Their interactions are more awkward than that drunk space marine dancing. The directing is lazy and lacks any interesting camera angles or style, and the sets and kills suffer greatly from the exceedingly low budget. Although, props for a kill so memorable, it didn't need a lot of money behind it. A lep coming out of a pee. Oh, I never. All this movie's shortcomings are mostly excusable, though, thanks to its endless parade of weird shit from start to finish. It didn't have the budget to properly implement its ideas, but that never stops Lep 4 from trying to do more and more. And that's kind of beautiful, man. Number 3. My top three rankings were very difficult to order, and since they're all such different movies, they're close to a three-way tie for my favorite. For the sake of this video, though, I'll put them in order and say the bronze place goes to Leprechaun Returns from 2018. The latest Leprechaun movie ignored all the other sequels and reboots, and instead made its story a direct continuation of the first films. Normally, like with Halloween, that'd be a bigger deal, but continuity was never a priority for this franchise. So it's fine that this one renders the space one non-canonical. It's leprechaun canon. It doesn't matter. I didn't have high hopes for a modern day movie made by sci-fi, but Lep Returns was a pleasant surprise, in large part due to its tone. It's a bit more dark and scary, similar to the first film, even though it's got some of the funniest moments out of any leprechaun movie. No, uh, go saucy, I can't do that! It strikes a similar balance of horror and comedy when it comes to the kills, which are the bloodiest of the franchise, but still manage to include some humor. That's why this movie didn't get a dull machete. I liked all the kills too much! This version of the Leprechaun is played by Lyndon Porco, a phenomenal successor to Warwick Davis's Leppy Boy. He nails the specific quality that makes Leprechaun so great, his ability to be silly, almost friendly at certain points in time, only to quickly turn around and be a sadistic mofo the next minute. Unfortunately, Porco's speech sounds inhibited by the prosthetics. I'm looking for something, and if you tell me where it is, I won't rip you to shreds. But I'd love for them to iron out the makeup kinks and bring him back for another film. He's great. Aside from the two forgettable dudes, the other characters are animated and lively, and leading lady Taylor Spritling gives a seriously hilarious performance. Her scenes with a returning Mark Holton as Ozzy are especially full of great comedic beats. Are you Irish? No, no. Oh. Just a fan of the culture? Not at all. There are stupid moments here and there that expose the seams of the screenwriting, try to ignore how often the characters separate for no reason, but Leprechaun Returns successfully updates the franchise for the modern age. I sincerely hope to have more. Number 2 at number two, I have many people's number one, Leprechaun 3 from 1995. 
even if it's not my particular favorite right now, Leprechaun 3 is the best and purest version of a Leprechaun movie. Its setting of Las Vegas is perfect for the greedy little shit, and three movies in, the character had been perfected by both Warwick Davis with his performance and Gabe Bartalos with his makeup. Though it had a real low budget, being the first Leprechaun movie with a direct-to-video release, that never stops it from being fun, and everyone on screen seems to be in on the joke. I especially love the almost definitely gay gangsters Arden and Tony, and of course, the franchise's greatest human villains, Fazio and Loretta. <laughs> Plus, the kills are the pinnacle of Lep's creative bloodshed. Exploding boobs? Murderous sex robots? We're a far cry from breaking a cop's neck in the woods. Just like Leprechaun in Space, there's a lot going on in this movie, and although it may not be as outrageous as burlesque dancing android sergeants, I think it's telling that the main character turning into a leprechaun is only the fifth or sixth most memorable thing from the movie. My complaints are few and minor. I don't love that Lep's locked in a pawn shop for Act 1. The leads are once again pretty boring, and there are way too many blurry shots. But god damn it, the leprechaun is running around Fremont Street, posing with the king and throwing dice at a craps table. This movie's fun and games are the most fun of the franchise. So even though it's not a perfect movie, it's still close to a perfect leprechaun movie. Number 1 but sitting at the top of this gold mound is Leprechaun in the Hood from 2000. Like all Leprechaun movies, this one has its strengths and weaknesses, but it wins the top spot mainly because of one thing, its characters and acting, which are hands down the best out of any Leprechaun movie. Leprechaun in the Hood might be the most famous title of the franchise, and a lot of people make fun of it because, to be fair, it sounds ridiculous. But Postmaster P, Stray Bullet, and Butch are some of the few human characters who are as interesting to watch as the Leprechaun himself. They're genuine dudes who share a goal and differ in how they want to pursue it, but they don't let that stop them from being close and even saying that they love each other. I love you, man. Love you, man. That unironic depiction of healthy masculinity is dope to see in a movie made in 2000. And because of how real they are to each other, you buy in and care about them more than just how Lep will kill them. Speaking of which, there is no death in the franchise more emotionally impactful than Stray Bullets. Like, it actually made me feel things. And yet the film's still able to have a lot of goofy fun and not come off as saccharine like when Lep went back to the hood. It's a difficult balancing act to achieve, but thanks to its talented cast, Lep in the Hood succeeds. Of course, even though it's my favorite, I've gotta fess up to its weaknesses. It's chock full of stereotypes. Now we're moving on up to the east side. Has a couple of characters who are insensitively portrayed, and dear God, I don't think a movie could look lower budget if it tried. Those Photoshop effects to show the Lep's transformation are bad enough, but when you literally see the top of the set they're filming in? That's real bad, man. Structurally, it could use a little more connective tissue, since it sometimes feels like it randomly jumps from scene to scene, and there are too many lengthy performances of middling rap songs that aren't anything to write to Spotify about. But man, I just don't care. Leprechaun smokes weed in a bathroom with iced tea. That's worth a thousand film set ceilings to me. And T's not just there in a cameo, like Coolio. He puts in the work and delivers some damn fine action acting here. The scene in his office, where he discusses a potential deal with the guys, could have just as easily come from a well-regarded network drama. Even as I finish this video, I'm not 100% certain about the order of my top three picks. All of them are great and bad in totally different ways. But for now, I'll say that my favorite is the one that has the best characters, the one that makes me feel the most, the one that sticks with me long after the credits. And that, no doubt, is Leprechaun in the Hood. Hope my wishy -wash rankings make sense to you. If not, maybe in three years I'll reevaluate again. I won't. I don't want to have to watch these fucking movies again. I'll try to do more franchise ranking videos this year, but until next time, I'm James A. Janice. This has been a Dead Meat production. Thanks for watching this ranking video for the Leprechaun franchise. I always love doing the set deck for Leprechaun videos, especially now that I have this awesome Leprechaun figure. It came from at Horror Handmade on Instagram. Check them out if you like it. It is beautiful handcrafted work. I also bought a Valak from him that I don't know where it went since the move. Hmm. Thanks everyone. Be good people.